What's going on, y'all? Welcome to my channel, and on this video, we are going to update everybody on the supply chain and what's going on in the agricultural industry and how it's affecting us and what's changing and all things about that. And I have a whole playlist. We've been talking about this for several years on this channel. I have a whole playlist. If you are new to this, I suggest watching these videos chronologically because they keep going and going and going. Everything fits together. Everything is a perfect storm. And if you just watch them chronologically, you'll your mind will be blown. So I want to start out with this article. U.S. farm groups urge sowing on protected land as war cuts off Ukraine supply. Now, what this article is talking about is farmers are realizing that the food supply chain is becoming detrimentally low. There are red sirens going off, not nationwide, but worldwide. This is very important. It's not like the U.S. is struggling and we can go to China or Brazil or Russia or Germany. This is a world problem. We can't go anywhere for help. We have to work it out and fix it. So what the farmers are doing is it says right here in a letter to the U.S. Secretary of Agricultural Tom Vilsack on Wednesday, seven agricultural lobbying organizations representing U.S. farmers, feed producers, grain exporters, millers, bakers, and oilseed processors asked the USDA, and, and they begged the USDA to provide flexibility to farmers to plant crops on more than 4 million acres of farmland that's enrolled in the Conservation Reserve Program without penalty. Now, keep in mind, once Biden took office, he upped the ante when it comes to conserving, taking land, millions of acres of land, more than what is already in the Farm Service Agency's Conservation Reserve Program, adding more to that just to conserve, okay, just to have more land to control for whatever, whatever the case may be, taking it from farmers. But what's happening in this article here is that they are begging the USA to allow and to release the restrictions so they can take that land of their own, they want to help out and, and farm it to help curb the food supply chain shortage and trouble that we are currently having and what's to come and what we're foreseeing in the future. Uh, there's more storms ahead. And basically, toward the end of the article, they're just, they basically said there's no immediate plan to relax CPR, CRP rules. And it's a little premature to make that call because we really don't know precisely what's going to happen. Yes, we do. It's it's quite clear what's going on. So this answer is stupid, uh, to say the least. <laughs> but um, let's go over to this article too. Not only are food shortages for human consumption a problem, but as we've talked about many times before on this channel, it's coming increasingly problematic of supplying feed for the animals to feed us. Again, it's a chain. You need to have feed to feed the animals that feed us. And if you don't have feed to feed the animals, the animals die and then we can't be fed. So it's this chain reaction, right? And it's becoming so not only expensive, but so many other problems across the board, including shortages. And we talked about fertilizing shortages. We talked about feed supply shortages. We talked about Brazil importing soybeans when they're our largest exporter of soybeans. It goes, the, the problems are endless. It is a hot mess everywhere. And then we're hearing, and we just passed Easter. It is April 18th today, I believe. If everyone paid their taxes today, you would know that day. So um, April 18th, we just passed Easter. It just passed Easter Sunday. Free range eggs no longer available in the UK due to bird flu crisis. Now, you guys are going to keep seeing this word, bird flu crisis. I'm going to do another video that talks about Gates and the Frankenstein bird flu connection. And it's going to be a very interesting video. And it's not a coincidence that we just passed Easter. Everyone gets eggs. They want to dye them, blah, blah, blah. Well, now there's no free range eggs in the UK in the stores. And it's alarming British consumers that prefer them. But are free range eggs actually ethical? So now we're starting to see, and we have been seeing this for quite some time, again, refer to how the food is changing playlist that I have on my channel about how they are pushing technology derived food, fake food, um, lab created food, gene edited food in the name of veganism, in the name of no, we don't want to 
eat real meat because it's unethical and we want to do this and because it's more ethical and clean and it's not dangerous and see all the problems that come with real live animals and see what it's doing with climate change and see what it's doing to our earth and our atmosphere and our bodies and look at all the flu and they're creating problems to create solutions as they always have and they always will. So they're pushing this. Are they really even ethical though? So not only do we see now a massive, I mean, we've talked on videos before years ago how chickens, especially in the very early portion of the pandemic in 2020, how suddenly thousands upon millions of chickens are just busting into flames and no one really knows how these places caught on fire. That's a whole nother topic. I'm going on a tangent, but to continue the whole chicken crisis, Iowa right here, to kill 1.5 million more hens, turkeys, because of the bird flu. The worst bird flu outbreak that the, in the U.S. happened in 2015, when more than 230 farms in 15 states had outbreaks. Now, Now, this is the biggest, Iowa is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, producers in the nation for eggs. Um, and they laid off a ton of workers, a ton of workers, 135, um, because they had to burn how many million? 1.5 million chickens. Same with farms getting shut down over here. 100,000 Italian farms at risk of closure due to EU sanctions because not only are farms being paid to not farm anymore, as we've seen and we've talked about in this playlist many times, but they're incentivized, incentivizing farmers to not farm, but it's becoming way more costly. Everything is is at such a low supply, farmers can't get what they need. And if they can get what they need, the cost is too high that it doesn't outweigh the balance. The balances are not, there's no balance is what I'm trying to say. And it's causing farmers to not farm. Now, experts here in this article don't predict large egg shortage for Wisconsin amid avian flu. So they're trying to say, well, it might be a local problem, but it might not be a, nat a national problem. And this is the exact article that I was looking for, where it says 10 to 12 million out of 320 million flocks in the U.S. recently tested positive for the highly patho uh, pathogenic avian influenza or bird flu. But here's the kicker. Guess what test they're using to test for it? The highly fraudulent PCR tests is what they're using, of course. And this is the Iowa Rembrandt is laying off 135 workers in the egg laying facility. 5.3 million egg laying hens were euthanized after the virus was detected on March 17th. So clearly there's a problem at hand. And when there's a problem at hand, you need a solution. And of course, they're pushing their lab created, gene created, more ethical, more climate friendly, more all of this types of foods. And we went over that. Um, I think Biden was called the techno food president. Um, basically generating food that is not good for us, but saying that it is good for us and is, and is good for the planet. And everyone is falling for it like a bunch of rocks off a cliff. So it says more non-meat choices are better than meat taxes or bans. Because remember, Agenda 2030 and what I talked about, the food chain reaction game, which I believe was practiced in 2015 right here, did end in a global carbon tax. And we're talking now about taxing meat more. It says right here, a 20 to 60% increase in prices of meat through a tax could be an important lever for aligning Western diets with environmental goals and can be designed such that low-income households and farmers are compensated. So this tax on meat is being discussed, but we've seen this before on the food chain reaction game that happened in 2015. And they're trying to create, and they're doing this with our energy folks. I went through a whole video on exactly what Agenda 2030 is, is targeting, and it's it's creating a whole new world. Klaus Schropp of the World Economic Forum has discussed this many times on the website. Um, and, and and not only is it going to attack meat specifically with the higher prices or a tax, a global carbon tax, it's it's even attacking the way that you can create and, and, and grow plants and food 
through greenhouses. Look at this. Now there's a cucumber crisis. Surging energy prices leave British glass houses empty because the cost of energy is skyrocketing. As the cost of natural gas soars and greenhouse temperatures fall, food prices will rise. Higher prices and shortages are likely for fruit and vegetables and other produce from the glass houses of Europe, which, by the way, many of them are empty, where the heat has been turned down because of the steep inflation in natural gas prices. And this is all happening. It's a perfect storm. We don't have feed for our animals. Our animals are getting killed off. If we do have animals, we can't feed them, which means we can't feed us. Their costs for supplies for farmers are up is completely disrupted. Farms that are used to having supplies come uh, once a week are now waiting once a month now. Everything is changing. Everything is going insane. And for someone to go back to this article and say that it's a little premature to make a call because we really don't know what's going to happen when Biden himself has already talked about, no, there, there's a shortage. There's something to be considered here three years later. It's a problem. It's a problem. So what do they want to do? Well, they're talking about developing a vaccine now for that. We feel strongly that if we could develop a vaccine, again, testing with the fraudulent PCR tests, just absolutely the perfect storm. So I just wanted to go through a couple quick articles and talk to you about what's happening, how it's still happening, how it's progressing. I know I may have sounded a little all over the place because there's just always so much to talk about. And I'm referring to a lot of the older videos I did where I specifically talked about these things in depth, topic by topic. So consider watching any number of those videos in this playlist that talks about our supply chain, that talks about our agricultural industry, how it's changing, new regulations, Agenda 2030, the global carbon tax, the global carbon emissions, how they want to completely get rid of carbon altogether, which is literally impossible then to have animals, which is what they want. It is um, so much to talk about and discuss. And I'm trying to keep it somewhat brief because a lot of the words that I'm using in this video are highly censored. Um, and I hope you still can gain a lot from it. And stay tuned for the video because I am going to go in depth about this new, uh, um, what should I say? This new this new roller coaster ride the world may be going on soon that has to do with the bird flu and how Gates has a lot to do with it, maybe all to do with it, and uh, his little Frankenstein experiment that happened several years ago. So stay tuned for that. It may be a Patreon-only video, so if you are not on my Patreon, please consider doing that. Also, I am on Gab, finally, and I'm not really totally sure how to use it, but I will be trying to familiarize myself with that and get over there completely. So please go follow me on Gab. I am going to try to make that my main number one platform altogether. So um, with that being said, if you like this video, feel free to subscribe and share. Follow me on Gab and Patreon, and I will see you guys in my next upcoming video. Thank you so much for watching.